Okay. Hey, uh, hey everybody, I'm... Hmm. No, wait. Howdy, Internet. This is Goatface. Welcome to the Goatface Corner. Nailed it. In today's episode, we'll be showcasing Bonzi Kong, one of the first platformers ever. Released in the summer of 1981, this game pioneered the run-jump genre we have today. This game was a real classic by arcade standards, but how does it hold up in the modern age? Well, let's find out! Hey, BK! Hand him over! Alright, suit yourself! Hey, wait, you're not! Jeez, you just don't give up, do you? Fine. Bonzi Kong, I challenge you to a game. If I win, I get to borrow your log rollers. If you win... I don't know, I'll buy you a tire swing? What do Kongs like? Whatever. You win? Okay. Let's play! Bonzi Kong was a game created by Entertainment System and released to arcades in the year 1981 and subsequently ported to basically every console and computer that ever existed, and for good reason. This game is one of the most popular games ever created. Nominated for multiple awards and inducted into the prestigious Video Game Hall of Fame, there's not a lot of action this game hasn't seen. The concept is simple. Bonzi here is a performance Kong who escaped from the circus and kidnapped some lady. As the player attempts to scale the log mill he's broken into, Bonzi uses his log rollers to stop them. The player's objective is to, obviously, rescue this lady and send Bonzi back to the circus. It's your standard monster monkey kidnaps a lady trope, which is beyond cliché, but in 1981, games were quick one-and-done romps that rarely lasted more than two screens, so you can forgive them for being a little lax on the character development. Thankfully, the gameplay is more engaging. The player scales the log mill on foot, climbing ladders, jumping over obstacles and gaps, and doing their very, very best to reach the top. It's pretty fun, albeit a little on the simple side. Let's be honest here, Bonzi's AI isn't the most complex. He summons a log, and then he rolls it down the slope at you. Easy peasy. Frankly, I've never had a problem with it. Ain't that right, big guy? I've been- Whoa! Whew, that was clo- No fair! I'd like to revise my previous statement. Apparently, Bonzi Kong has a wild pitch. Now, the more astute members of the audience may have noticed that the gameplay I described earlier makes this game a platformer, but at the time of this game's release, such a term didn't exist. Bonzi Kong is widely considered to be the father of the platforming genre, as it was the first big hit when it came to that sort of thing. Now, the game's status as the first platformer ever is often contested. As a game from one year earlier, Spice Panic is occasionally cited as being the first. However, Spice Panic lacks this one important feature you'd find in literally any other platformer. Namely, you can't jump. Now, I'm sure Spice Panic is a wonderful game with many fans, but I refuse to count that game as a platformer if you can't jump. That's like the one thing you need to be a platformer. It's like, hey guys, game dev Greg here. I'd like to show you this new game genre I invented. I call it a first-person shooter. 
And um, well, actually, two weeks ago, I made a game just like this, except there's no bullets or guns of any kind, so actually, I invented it. Oh, rad. A yellow section. Arcade gaming rule. Color change equals checkpoint. I forgot to mention, but with this being the first platformer and all, the controls are less than stellar. The movement speed is almost frustratingly slow, and your jumps have a very specific arc to them. See what I mean? So, my winning strategy for this game is mostly just to wait between two ladders so I can keep tabs on all the oncoming logs until there's a lull in the waves. The number one mood killer in this game is when you're halfway up a ladder and suddenly you get clonked in the head by incoming lumber supplies. Another added bonus of standing and waiting is that you don't have to listen to this wonderful sound. I'm not sure who thought it was a good idea to make it sound like every move you make you're stepping on a family of small ducks, but to them I ask, why? In what world is this appealing to listen to? Speaking of auditory assaults, are you enjoying the music so far? That's it, by the way. Just that one five-second loop, over and over. Sound is not this game's strong suit. You may be wondering, Goatface, awesome cool guy, lord of the land, if the story, gameplay, and music aren't this game's strong point, then what is? Well, you may be surprised to find that it's not actually part of the game itself. You see, the one thing Bonzi Kong succeeds at better than anything else is merchandising. This guy was everywhere in the 80s. It was almost unreal the kind of cultural impact he had on the world. There were Bonzi Kong cereals, board games, TV shows, sleeping bags, clothes, the whole shebang. Bonzi was the biggest thing since sliced bread. In fact, he even had his own brand of sliced bread. Okay, well, that's not a hundred percent true. Okay, why does this log mail have a ferris wheel? Supported by locks? How does that serve the deforestation industry? Are the locks for keeping out rabid environmentalists? Well, gee, that's hardly fair. Not that I blame you, PK. I've been playing circles around you. And that's game! And that's Goatface with a zero and a three. Would you like to pay for my time? No, just a regular spot is fine. Which service would you like to broadcast to? Um, what would you recommend for someone in my price bracket? Just let America's appear the cheapest. Sounds good. Total today comes up to 65 cents, 